party. <laughs> this is Paul. Yes. <laughs> ex parte application. <laughs> See, ex parte motion under motion. Yes. <laughs> then there's the ex parte communication. Right. <laughs> the ex parte divorce. <laughs> The ex parte hearing, ooh, the ex parte injunction, yes, and then the ex parte materna, mm. now let's say we looked at the ex parte divorce, yes, can you tell me ooh, what individual motioned the court for dissolution of marriage where you did not give me the, the uh, without notice to or argument by the respondent that you said we could issue a dissolution of marriage. Now, when you motion the court for the dissolution of marriage ex parte, as in one side, yes, and then you served me when you arrested me at the same moment, that would be in violation of the ex parte motion for dissolution of marriage. That would be a wrongful execution of the ex parte notice of court hearing known as the dissolution of marriage. Now, maybe somebody would like to call Judge Rohr and explain the difference between ex parte, one side without an adverse party. Now, I have told you that it's against the law to issue dissolutions of marriage without any notice to the adverse party. That's the PKPA. Pooh. Now, let's look at motioning the court. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion to withdraw. Mm -hmm. Motion to suppress. Pooh. Motion to server. <laughs> Motion for protection order. A party's request that the court protected from potentially abusive action by the other party, usually relating to discover, <laughs> as when one party seeks discovery of the... No, that's... Oh, Party's trade secrets. <laughs> oh, that's a different kind of protection order. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they have two kinds of protection order. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that right? Oh, we got to make sure we know what kind of protection order it is. <laughs> now, a motion, motion, motion calendar. Oops. <laughs> Can you actually put on the calendar an ex parte court order? Oops. <laughs> without it being the ex parte party known as the petitioner. <laughs> get, get, <laughs> ex parte motion. Oh, a motion made to a, the court without notice to the adverse party. Mm -hmm. A motion that a court considers and rules on without hearing from all sides. <laughs> also termed ex parte application. <laughs> Let's look at this court form, okay? That you say you don't have to follow the orders. <laughs> you don't have to issue according to the requirements of the RCWs. <laughs> All six pages of it, yes. Mm -hmm. Can the respondent be the restrained without the ex parte petitioner, yes, being the ex parte person that motioned the court? Oh, <laughs> So it would seem that everything in this is fraudulent. Oh, now all of it is fraudulent. Can you arrest the respondent for any and all crimes relating to this court order known as violating the domestic violence protection order? If it was not the ex parte party that motioned the court for the ex parte hearing because of the reissuance of the temporary protection order. Oh, <laughs> that means that all the time I spent in jail, I'm going to sue you for every fucking thing. Now, judge, can you have an ex parte motion of the court without notice to the adverse party known as the respondent <laughs> for the issuance of a permanent protection order that says mental health evaluation? Can you require mental health evaluations and involuntary psychotropic medication without it being the actual ex parte party that motioned the court for the issuance of the temporary protection order? 
Can you do anything that you've been doing for the last seven years without notice to the respondent from July 8th? Ouch. <laughs> because there was no adverse party before you issue the first permit. See, let's look at uh, Exhibit B again. Well, let me see here. If there's no adverse party, no, Calgill, the law only allows for the issuance of an ex parte temporary protection order as long as the adverse party, known as the respondent, receives actual notice of the court hearings. <laughs> when you issued this on July 8, 2011, Petition for the order of protection. Oh, temporary order. It can be issued, yes, ex parte, because of the allegation of domestic violence and child abuse. <laughs> as, as much as I know about the law, only domestic violence protection orders can be temporarily issued ex parte without there being notice to the adverse party before you issue the court order. Now, can you have a second hearing on July 22nd of 2011 when you know when you reissued the ex parte temporary protection order? that I, as the adverse party, the respondent, the father of five sons, was not given notice or opportunity to be heard. No, you can't. Can you issue a one-year permanent protection order, poof, ex parte, without any notice? You can't. So for over seven years, you've held my sons hostage. You've allowed for the abduction and kidnapping of children because you don't understand what the fucking export is. Now, I'm wanting you to realize that only ex parte court hearings and only ex parte motions made to the court without notice prior to having court hearings to the adverse party are allowed because of the threat of domestic violence or child abuse. All the other court hearings, as much as I know about the law, every other kind of court hearing that a person could have, a corporation or any other court hearing, requires notice to the adverse party. <laughs> I'm going to want my sons today. Do you fucking understand? 